Okay, guys, here we go. This is example one for my next little lesson here. And um, I'm going to finally show you a problem where the first number is not a one. Also, you'll notice these are already written in equation style. So all of your problems, just to get used to uh, the formats, sometimes it'll be written in function style. This example is written in equation style. So they want me to solve. So when they say solve, that's a very broad term. It means find out any value you could plug in for x that would make this a true statement. Now here's the thing. What do I want you to get from example one? There can be fraction shelf numbers. We haven't seen that yet, but it's because of this guy. And you can have complex number answers. That means there could be I numbers in the answer. Now, I numbers are actually really easy to spot when you do the work. So let's begin with what are my possible shelf numbers? So you say plus or minus one or five. But here's the thing. This number here also contributes to this concept. See, every time we've done a problem so far, this number's been a one, which means there's a one in the bottom. But since there's a three here, you have to ask yourself, what goes into three? One and three go into three. So when I've been talking to you guys about this thing called the rational roots theorem, I've been using that term, rational roots theorem, we've never had a bottom part to it because that's always been a one. So you'll see in my next two examples, I use this, but what does it really mean? It means we could have a positive or negative one over one or five over one, or my shelf number might be one third. Or my shelf number could be five-thirds. So when I do synthetic division, I don't always get to start with a whole number. Sometimes I might have to use a fraction. Yeah, I know, it's not our... We're like, woo, great, that sounds totally fun. No, but I mean, that is the breaks. That does happen. So here we go. I want to show you what it looks like when we do that. So I'm going to do synthetic division. It's in the right order. It is. I know that I should find three solutions for this equation because they told me to solve. I'm going to bring the three down. This is the first time I brought down something other than one. And I've got to pick a shelf number from this list. But I don't want to just guess and hope I'm right, especially if I have to guess a fraction. Yeah. So here we go. Once again, I'm going to use my graphing calculator to help me out. I'm going to turn it on. And when I turn it on, I'm going to go to mode. And just so you know, I'm going to go back to classic mode this time. In case anybody out there uh, does not have math print as a capability. You can switch between the two. In fact, you know what? You figure out what you like the best and then use that. That's okay by me. So I'm going to use classic mode. I'm going to quit that screen. Right above mode says quit. I'm going to go to y equals and I say, wait, that's from my last thing I did. So I'm going to clear it out. And I'm going to enter in this new guy. This new guy is 3x to the third minus 7x to the second, uh, plus 17x minus 5. And here we go. I'm going to hit graph. So here, I'm going to get a little closer so it's a lot. There we go. Let's see what it looks like. And remember, if you forgot to zoom standard last time, you're in trouble. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Uh, I'm supposed to have three answers. I only see one thing. Well, here's the deal with this. This graph is a third power polynomial. So it's supposed to go up on the right side and down on the left. 
maybe this thing goes over here somewhere. Maybe it goes off the screen somewhere. Or maybe we have I numbers or complex number answers. Here's how we, we play this out. That intersection with the x-axis appears to be between 0 and 1. Hey, you know what? That's my only choice in my list of possible roots between 0 and 1. So I'm going to go second, calculate the value at 1. Now, to enter a fraction on this, I just use division. 1 divided by 3. And look, it types it out for you like a fraction. I'm going to hit enter, and guess what? <laughs> and by the way, whenever you enter a fraction, it'll convert it to a decimal. I don't know why it does that, but it does. So 0.3, which is one third. Uh -huh. So guess what? I'm going down here. One third is the number I'm going to use in synthetic division because I do not see any other choice. Let's multiply one third times three. Well, that's easy. One third of three is one. Add down. I get negative six. What is one-third of negative six? I think it's negative two. I'm going to add down, I get 15. What is one-third of 15? One-third times 15 would be five. And then I go, woohoo, totally cool. I got myself a zero. So that is one of my answers. One of my solutions to this equation is one-third. I have two more to fill in the blanks. I don't know what they are gonna be, but my guess is they're going to be complex numbers. Why? Well, I'll explain as I go, but let's walk it down. I have a third power problem, so now this is going to be a second power situation, and that looks quadraticalrific. It really does. So I have 3x squared minus 6x plus 15 equals 0. Now, do you guys notice this? There is a GCF involved here. When you have a GCF in, the, in, a, in an equation, you can take it out. It will not change your solutions for x. It won't. No, no, no. I am wagging my finger. I am going to take out the 3. <laughs> Check this out. Here's why it doesn't really change things. I take out the three. What's the benefit? I have much tinier numbers to work with. Megusta tiny numbers. But here's why. If I divide this by three and I divide this by three, I am not breaking any rules. That is a totally legit statement. Over here, they cancel. Over here, what's nothing divided by three? It's nothing. So I end up with x squared minus 2x plus 5 equals 0. I can solve that using quadratic formula, and the numbers are tinier. Now, here's the thing, though. I wanted to show you this. Um, when you um, use quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus square root of, be careful, b squared, negative 2 squared, means negative 2 times negative 2, which I know is 4. But be careful on your calculator. I'm going to quit the screen here. Watch this. Negative 2. I just entered in negative 2 to the power of 2. It's going to tell me the answer is negative 4. And I know that's not true. When you are going to take a negative number to a power on these calculators, you've got to put it in parentheses or it'll get it wrong. Better yet. Here's what I say. Better yet. Do it in your head. Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we go 2 plus or minus the square root of, and then this whole chunk of junk, the discriminant, this number inside here, turns out to be negative 16. And then I say, whoop, I say, wait a minute, that's the same as... What they used to call me in the fourth grade, that's four eyes, four eyes. <laughs> Get it? It's a joke. Two plus or minus four. <laughs> it's really, it's a horrible joke. Okay, so here's my question to you. Way back when, I think it was uh, lesson three or un unit one, video three, I had you guys do this type of stuff at the 
because ching, 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 we can reduce this thing. Let's reduce it. What do we get? We get one plus or minus two i because two goes into all three. You don't get to reduce if only these two guys have something. You don't get to reduce if only these two guys. It's gotta be all three. It's gotta be the triple. It's gotta be the trinity, the three. I can't, trifecta. So what do we get here? Hey, when I go to solve this equation, one third was one of my answers. In fact, that's the only answer that is called a real solution. These other two answers, one plus or minus two i, one plus two i is one of the answers, one minus two is two i is the other one. Those make up my three solutions because I'm supposed to have three solutions, but two of them happen to be complex. Now, how do you recognize that? Let's go back here. When you look at a graph, and you know there's supposed to be three points of intersection and you only see one point of intersection, chances are you're gonna have a complex solution in that question. Let's take a look at the next example. I got two more to go, so here we go. First things first, I like to clear my screen. I like to go back to Y equals and clear stuff out. If you haven't done it in a while, zoom standard. Make sure you're starting fresh every time. Looks like I've got a little goober there. Okay, so anyway, here is my next example. Now this is an equation, but what am I trying to get at with, oh, sorry, with example two? What am I trying to get at? I wanna cover all the bases with you guys. I want you to remember that to solve a polynomial equation or to find x-intercepts, whatever they're talking about, you know, you got to set it equal to zero. Now, the other thing I want you to get out of this is make the highest power positive. So look at this problem, this equation. The highest powered thing in that whole deal is this guy, and he is currently negative. I want to move him to the other side and that will make him positive. I want to move this guy to the other side. I would have to take away this guy to move him. I would have to add this guy to move him. But if I do that, the result should be this. I get everything on one side at equals zero. That's what I got. Now, this guy, once again, that's not a one, that's a two. So my first step is use the rational, and I'm rat, rational roots theorem to give myself a starting place. Plus or minus, what goes into 28? One does, two does, four does, seven does. 14 does, 28 does, Ew. that's a lot of stuff. What goes into two? One and two. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. I know that any of these could be a possible choice, but what about this? What about like one half? What about two halves? Wait, two halves reduces to one, so I don't need to count that. So one half, and then there's only one other combination here that isn't already... Do you see it? Do you see it? Seven halves. So I am now going to say unto myself, I am going to say unto myself, I have already set it equal to zero and made the highest powered thing positive all in one shot. Good for me. Now I need to solve this thing using synthetic division. Bringing down the two. Oh, I need some more room here because I have to show you my shelf. But before I do anything, now it's time to go back to y equals and graph this. So I'm going to say 2x to the third. Uh, where are we at? 2x to the third minus 7x to the second. Sorry, I'm in the way with this. I'm trying to, no, oh, well, plus 8x minus 28. All right, so I have it entered in. There it is. 
make sure you're matching up with me. Okay, I'm gonna hit graph. Let's see what happens here. When I hit graph, hmm. Well, how suspicious is that? It looks like it crosses between three and four. You know what? I know many numbers. There are infinitely many between three and four, but this guy seems to be the one that they want me to use because the rational roots theorem says, if you're going to find any kind of shelf number, you're gonna find it by looking at the combination of this and this. Okay, so I have my graph. I'm gonna turn this off now and get it out of my way because if I am correct, then seven halves is the dude I gotta use. And I go, what's seven halves of two? So you know what, seven halves of two. Cross cancel, that's a seven. Add down, I get zero, that's okay. What's seven halves of nothing? Nothing. Add down, I get eight. What is seven halves of eight? Well, cross cancel. I mean, you could do it on a calculator, but really it's not, these are not brutal numbers to work with. But I wanted you to see something that ended like this. So let's see, two x squared plus the ox plus eight equals zero. So I am now gonna take this guy here and do the work down below so I can, so I'm gonna rewrite it for you. Two x squared plus no x's, so I'm just gonna go right to there. Now, see this guy right here? I could cheerlead this thing. I don't, I could move the eight, I could. Take it away, take it away, take it away now. And I'd get two x squared equals negative eight. I could then divide by two, I could. And I'd get the squared thing alone. I want the squared information by itself. What's it gonna equal? It's gonna equal negative four. And then I could say, what do cheerleaders do? They root, root. And I get x equals plus or minus two i, two i. Bam, so that's one answer, two answers three answers total. So the solve, it says solve, I just did. I get x equals seven halves and plus or minus two, oh crap, two i. That is the worst looking i, but you know what I meant. Okay. Oh, and I, you can't even see what I'm writing. That is the worst looking i. I, I, I don't know what happened to that thing. There, even that looks crappy. We got one more example. Why do we have one more example? Because this is my last example. Now, here's the thing. It's a fourth power problem. It is. And this last example has a little bit of everything we have talked about up to now. So, what I'd like you guys to do is See if you can get the answer to this all by yourself. Pause the video right now and go through all the steps that you have been taught and see if you can get it. Okay, so pause it. Okay, so you should be back from the pause now or you never paused it and you said, I'm not doing that. You can't make me, you're not here. I'll go, okay, fine, that is true. So anyway, see this guy? What was your first move? You should have moved this over. You should have subtracted the 21. 21. And that would have given you, oh, I gotta write this out, 4x fourth minus 7x cubed minus 25x squared plus 49x minus 21 equals zero. And then I would say, well, I'm gonna have to use synthetic division twice to do this, so I might as well get it ready to roll. I might as well get everything ready to rock. I'm gonna bring down a four. I'm gonna have to pick a shelf number twice to do this, but I don't wanna just pick any shelf number. So what are the possible ones that would work for me? Plus or minus one, three, seven, or 21. 
And then what would be the bottom part? One, two, or four. Ew. So I might have one half or one fourth, or three halves or three fourths. Seven halves, seven fourths. I have, ah, 21 fourths, ah, 21 halves. There's all kinds of crappy possibilities for this thing. So I do not want to just guess. I'm going to go back to my calculator. Now, I'm going to go y equals, and I'm going to clear this out. This is, eh. and I'm going to say 4x. Okay, I'm just going to put it down and do it. 4x to the fourth minus 7x to the third minus 25x to the second plus 49x minus 21. And let's graph it. Let's see what it looks like. And hopefully when you graph this thing, you saw this, which I was trying to fool you on. I was trying to fool you a little bit and see if you would go, hmm, I wonder what's up here. Now, here's the thing. That looks like a one. So I would be instantly drawn to the easiest number and say, one. So I'm just going to jump on it and try it. If I use one here, one times four, I get a negative three. Ding, ding. I get another negative three. I get negative 28. Negative 28. Oh my gosh, what is that? That's 21. One times 21. There it is. Bam, I found it. So I go, cool. One of my solutions. Solve. You better believe it. I found one of the answers. I have three more answers to find. But if you look at that, it almost looks like a bounce. Almost looks like a bounce. It seems to poke through that x-axis just a little bit. So guess what? I'm going to zoom box. I want to go in and find out what's going on there. So I'm doing zoom box. I'm going to, going to go over there and I'm going to take charge. Let's see what's inside. There's the bounce, I think, at one. <gasps> But it's not a bounce at all. <gasps> that dirty bird. Look at that. That's not a bounce. So that's the one. Let's make sure. I'm going to go second. Calculate the value at one. I'm using all my tricks. Yep, there it is. So guess what? This is some number less than one. Look at our possibilities here. What's a number in here that's slightly less than one? I think three-fourths is the dude. So I'm going to just check it. I'm going to go second, calculate the value at three divided by four, three-fourths. And I'm going to say, hmm, oh, there it is. Woot, woot. So I'm going to now say three-fourths is the next number. It is totally three-fourths. So let's do this. I'm going to bring down the four. What is three-fourths of four? Three-fourths of four is three. Oop, there's my zero. Three-quarters of nothing is nothing. That's negative 28. Three-quarters of that is negative 21. And I add down, I get zero. So guess what? 4x squared plus no x is minus 28 equals zero. Wait a minute. Let me go back to that picture. I'm going to zoom standard. I'm going to zoom standard and get out of that box I was trapped in. See, just because I had to show you problems that have I number solutions to them doesn't mean everything does. This clearly has one, two, three, four points of intersection. So there are four points of intersection, which means I'm going to find them right here, and they are not going to be I numbers. There are four points of intersection. I will not find I numbers here. Here's the big thing. Complex numbers do not cross the x-axis ever. That's one thing I wanted you to get out of this. So if you see that you have all four intersection points, it means you're not going to get any i and numbers on this guy. So let's do it like we did the last one. We're going to cheerlead 4x squared minus 28 equals 0. Ready? Okay. Let's move the 28 because I like to move it. I like to move it, move it. I'm going to get 4x squared equals 28. Es la verdad. Vamos a dividir. Dividimos. What is that? 7? 28 divided by 4 is 7, right? So I go... Root, root. Ready? Okay. X equals... I'm going to just write my answers here. X equals plus or minus rad 7. 
So that's one, two, three, four answers. That's what I was supposed to get. That's a solve, baby. That is a solve. So just for kicks, one last thing. I'm gonna go second calculate the value at square root seven. And oh, see, it did that. See, I'm trying to get an example that does every weird thing that you can possibly run into. What does it mean when your calculator says, ee? That just means it's it doesn't know how to say zero. That's what it means. That's what it means. Because it's trying to say one times, whoops, it's trying to say one times 10 to the negative 11th, which is a super tiny, super tiny, tiny baby number. Your calculator does not know how to think. But guess what? That's pretty darn good. Pretty darn impressive knowing how to use so many things. Remember, y equals. We enter things there. That's where we enter our stuff. Whether we're in, I'm going to hit mode, classic or math print, that's up to you at this point. But I know that I can zoom things. I can zoom box. I can zoom standard. Um, zoom in and out, eh, you know, eh, zoom square. We'll talk about that down the road. But basically, what you end up using the most is zoom box, uh, zoom standard, and when we get to the trig, zoom trig. Those are your big heavy hitters in the zoom menu. Now, uh, trace, remember, that's just an estimator. I can move that little spider on the web there. But calculate, there's all kinds of cool stuff there. And we'll talk about it as we go through. And then, of course, graph is our guy that draws the graphs. But right above graph, hey, just you can't hurt the calculator. I'm going to hit second graph, and I get this table. So it means when you, you know, you can look at all these different values, you know, but they're whole number input, and not we're not always using whole number input. But <clears throat> there you go. There's all kinds of stuff to play with on the calc. Um, but now you know quite a few things you can do with it. All right. Well, talk about it later because that is uh that is all I needed to show you so I'm going to turn this off the calculator it is and then here is what I want you guys to do and I wrote them in equation form this time there's five questions there solve the following polynomial equations do not give me decimal answers if it's fraction you write a fraction if it's a radical you write a radical Pause it, take a picture of it. Here comes the answer key. If you do these correctly, there's the answers you should get. And you'll notice I don't have any decimal answers there. Okay, and two of them will result in complex numbers. It can happen. And these ones don't. All right, good luck. Uh, see you on the other side.